Welcome to Chapter 1 pre-lecture video. In your upcoming lecture, you are going to learn about controlled experiments. So I'm going to present to you the main ideas that you're going to cover in lecture so that you have somewhat of a preparation going in on what you can expect in your first day in STAT 100. In our everyday lives, we come up with our favorites, whether it's talking about our favorite food, our favorite diet regimen, our favorite uh, face wash, makeup, anything you want to say, based on observations we've made in our own lives. Uh, you might say that um, studying at the library, you feel that studying at the library gets you a better test result than studying in your dorm room. You might prefer your face wash because you never get pimples when you use it. You might say that drinking eight glasses of water a day right before the summer is a great way to lose a few extra pounds. These are just observations that we've made in our daily lives that we've come to understand to be truths. Well, how true are these truths? The only way to actually get scientific, concrete data is to set up studies where we can observe the responses of these treatments to understand how effective and how true these favorites really are. So in order to take these hunches that we have on what we prefer over not preferring, we need to set up a study. Now there's several different kinds of studies that we can use, and you've read about almost all of them probably in the daily newspaper. Uh, the most common that we're going to discuss, the big over, the broad uh, studies that we observe the most frequently are exper uh, controlled experiments and observational studies. A controlled experiment In a controlled experiment, a researcher takes a group of people and then divides them into two groups. One group will receive the treatment, whatever it may be, whether it's you know studying in the library, drinking eight glasses of water a day, or using your favorite brand of face wash. And then the other group is, is used as a comparison that we can directly compare to, to see really if any difference was made without the treatment. So we have our treatment group and our control group. And the main point of the, the controlled experiment is that the researcher decides who goes where. So the researcher the researcher divides his subjects into two groups. So an example of this, let's go off that idea that some students really feel adamantly about studying in the library because their dorm room is not a suitable study environment. Let's say that we wanted to do a controlled experiment with this idea. So let's start out with our pool of subjects. Let's say we had 100 willing U of I students, subjects, so U of I students, and that I, the researcher, now decide these 100 students into two groups. We have our treatment group and we have our comparison group. And the comparison group you're always going to uh, hear is referred to as the control group. Just the same idea. A group that we're comparing our treatment, troop, our treatment group against who did not receive the treatment. So comparison group, control group, same thing. So in this scenario, our treatment group, we would have 50 uh, U of I students who were assigned to study at the, let's say, the undergraduate library, the UGL. And let's say this went over a series of weeks, and that these students who volunteered to be part of my study my experiment, they were assigned to the UGL and that's where they had to go and study. They had to report in and study there. Now my comparison group would be my, the 50 students that I selected to, uh, who were assigned, oops, assigned to study in their dorm rooms. And so for a series of weeks, these students had to report for studying duty in their dorm rooms. The main point that needs to come across here is that the researcher decides. Now there's, a, there's a different ways that researchers can divide these groups. 
Uh, and we're going to learn more about that in lecture. We can do it randomly. We can do it uh, selectively. There's a series of different ways that you can do it. But the main point, regardless of how he, he or she decides, is that the researcher is the one who decides, not the students. The students did not have a choice in the matter. So now at this point, we would follow these students over a series of weeks. We would look at their exam scores. And then we would be able to directly compare across the board and see, hmm, which, which group did better, our treatment group or our comparison group. The main goal of this experiment and of any experiment is to make sure that our two groups that we're comparing are as similar as possible. We want these two groups to be identical in almost every way except for the treatment. So we wouldn't put all of the boys in the treatment group and all the girls in the comparison group because boys and girls are different in other ways other than just the treatment. You wouldn't put all of your, your best students in the treatment group and your worst students in a comparison group because you then know that this is going to be a lopsided study. We want to make sure that these two, that the only difference between our groups is the treatment so that we can therefore uh, pin the difference in the groups on the treatment. So um, they have to be like in every way, so does that mean that they're going to take the same exam, they'd be in the same course? Is that because you want that? Is that, is that like how, you're measuring how well the treatment works and so you'd have to have the same measuring stick for both of them? Do you want the measuring stick to be the same for both groups? Right. We wouldn't want to be studying students uh, taking an economics test and then comparing it to a chemistry test. You would want to have your two samples be under the same conditions, having the same professor, the same class, uh, the same, same study materials. The only thing that's different is the environment. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's the main goal of the, con the main point of the controlled experiment. And the main thing that should be stuck in your head is that the researcher divides the subjects into the treatment group and the comparison group. Now the other uh, the other main one that we're going to see in the media a lot is the observational study. I have one more question. Sure, what's your question? Why do we want them to be the same again? Why do they have to be the same? I mean, because they're different people. Why, why, what, why should they have to be the same? We want our treatment group and our comparison group to be the same in every other way so that any differences that we see in the results of this experiment, we can directly point back to the treatment. So if the two groups are identical in every single way, uh, you know, whether it's you know, GPA, the class that they're taking, um, the professor that they're taking, the, court, uh, the, the way that they're studying, the study materials that they're using, they're the same in every single way. The only difference is um, the environment that they're studying in. Then, if we see that one group does significantly better than the other, we can relate it back and say, wow, the environment you study in really does make a difference. Because everything else is the same. Because everything, everything else is the same. We want to make sure that the scales start out even, so that any difference that the treatment makes, if the scales start to get uneven, we know it's the treatment that's causing that difference in the two groups. If we start out with two groups that aren't equal, then our data is just going to be more confusing, that we don't know what changed what. We want to start out on an even playing field for both groups.